With the surging popularity and victories of presidential candidate Bernie Sanders, the establishment is having a panic attack about people riding the waves of populism into the turbulent seas of socialism. After Sanders' victory in Nevada, MSNBC's lead racist grandpa, Chris Matthews, likened this victory to the Nazi victory of France. Bernie Sanders is Jewish and had family members that were killed in the Holocaust. On a recent debate on Democracy Now!, economist Paul Krugman justified Matthew's statements by saying that it was an extreme reaction driven out of fear of what Sanders represents to these people. Yeah, it it is a reaction of fear, kind of like how concentration camps and the visceral hatred of the Jewish people was an extreme reaction based out of fear. So maybe the lesson to be learned here is that we make less decisions out of fear and more decisions based on logic and humanity, two words that were removed from Chris Matthews' vernacular when he got his job at MSNBC. But this notion of fear-mongering over the term socialism is the largest critiques that Krugman has of Bernie Sanders. To Krugman, the right and major Republicans have taken that term and demonized it to mean big government controlling your life. According to Republicans and most centrist Democrats, socialism is giving up your autonomy and the means of labor and production over a governing body. What Republicans and most centrist Democrats don't tell you is that they want you to give up your life, autonomy, and the means of labor and production to a corporate entity run by a very rich and most likely white person. They don't want big government but a private industry. And go figure, the side that believes in rugged individualism and machismo wants bigger privates. Now, Krugman makes the argument that Bernie Sanders isn't advocating for socialism or even a more specified democratic socialism, but for a social democracy. This would be the economic and cultural model of a country like Denmark that focuses on governing system on social justice and decreasing inequality in their society. And Sanders is advocating for all those things. But the question proposed by Krugman is that he should be leading his statements with the term social democracy instead of socialism. Why isn't he doing that? That's that's what Krugman keeps proposing. But I doubt the leaders and their propagandists would feel better if the term social democracy was thrown around by Sanders' camp. I mean, they would still call him a socialist and misdefine that word. But in the same debate, Marxist economist and professor emeritus Dr. Richard Wolff points out that the definition of what a socialist is has been in flux and debated since the idea's inception. Dr. Wolff points out that the important aspect of the movement surrounding Bernie is more about criticizing the way capitalism works and has been working. And it allows us to question the powers that be and encourages us to push back against an unequal system. But Krugman keeps sticking to the point that the word socialism or socialist is too dangerous because the opposition has weaponized and demonized it. Krugman is more focused on the labels than the ideas. He deviates away from the conversation by dismissing ideas presented by Sanders, the Democratic Socialist of America, and other socialist movements. By doing this, he's giving more weight to the critics of socialism and doesn't give any weight to how critical the socialist ideas are in combating inequality driven by capitalism. It really shows the hyper-tribalism that we as human beings have. During the entire conversation, both Krogman and Wolf have a lot of moments of being on the same side, but Krugman doesn't seem like he's able to let go of the label associated with Sanders' campaign. But the superficiality is how most corporate mainstream media deals with Bernie Sanders. It's virtually impossible to give his ideas any attention or credit. Even the neoliberal comedic messiah Trevor Noah does this. In a recently published compilation video, most of the jokes were at Bernie's expense, particularly about his looks. Noah makes jokes about how he looked the same way for 30 years, or his hair no longer being disheveled, and so on and so on. 
This is no different than the way CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News calls him an angry old man. The 60-minute video focuses on about three minutes on a joke made about how Bernie Sanders was born as an old man and less time on the long-form interview where Bernie explained what his ideas were. And during the Warren and Bernie feud uh, over Warren's lie, Noah calls Warren a socialist. Wrong! Warren has been an avid champion of capitalism, and more importantly, the way capitalism is currently working. She is for billionaires and called herself a capitalist on the debate stage. Now, if Krugman has a problem with the demonization of the word socialism by the right, why wouldn't he advise Warren from taking on the label of capitalist since it's got so much negative context from the working class people and the activist community? It sounds like Krugman is more about placating to Republican and corporate Democrats than he is for the ideas to help the people that represent this country. Noah also points out uh, a long-form New York Times interview that was done with all of the candidates, except Tulsi Gabbard, but did include Deval Patrick. I guess with Bernie's inclusion, having Tulsi Gabbard on too would be an overwhelming amount of truth to put out to by the New York Times, which tells you it's a beacon of journalism, but in reality, it's just a part of the propaganda wing of the American war economy. Now, they asked Bernie about what his weaknesses are, like it was a job interview. And let's be honest, the presidential campaigns are like a job interview for the highest office in the land. And if democracy worked the right way, we would all be CEOs of that system. Now, Bernie responded, and he said that he's not good at small talk or pleasantries and societal norms like wishing people happy birthday all the time. Look, if you're a grown adult human working in Congress to to lead your constituents and someone doesn't wish you happy birthday and that offends you, go ahead and quit your job and go work for the New York Times so you can stand on your ego and complain and lie about people because you're a fucking child. I'm not a big fan of pleasantries and small talk and societal norms and I do just fine and get along with people okay but when there's a job to be done let's do the damn job which means that we need our politicians to be legislating and creating better laws to make a fair and just society instead of asking about the weather and if the answer to that isn't climate change is a problem that we need to fix, then you're not doing your job right. The coup de grace of the Trevor Noah video is taking out-of-context clips of Bernie Sanders' public access television show where he sometimes talked to kids about the goings-on in Burlington, Vermont. In the clip, it shows Bernie having an open discussion about drugs like cocaine with uh, some kids in a park which is probably better than any discussion that they would have had with a D.A.R.E. officer. I mean, at least with Bernie, you know you're going to get sound, reasonable answers of w- which discuss the positive and negative effects of these drugs and their addictive qualities. Plus, you get a history of how and why the drug war failed in America. And sure, these kids aren't going to actually understand this information, but it will be in their brains for later. Now, after... Noah made fun of how Bernie was trying to score drugs from the kids, which doesn't even make any sense even in the hyperbolic of context. He shows Bernie calling a child dumb. Now, what that clip doesn't show is the discussion Bernie engaged in with the kids about why they need an education. And Sanders goes on to encourage the child to continue pursuing education and not giving up on himself. Meanwhile, Noah doesn't show that part of the clip because it doesn't feed into the neoliberal joke narrative of superficiality that he is told to create. The reason that it is hard to say anything substantial about the ideas that has been ignited by Bernie Sanders is related to what Dr. Richard Wolff mentions in the Democracy Now! debate. Dr. Richard Wolff points out that the politics have shifted further to the left and what Americans want are ideas like Medicare for All, public education, public parks, and other ideas that are deemed socialist. Look, true change take risk, takes risks. 
Okay, risks that the establishment elites are not willing to take. So they keep using these old tricks of using news anchors to liken candidates to stand up for authoritarians and use their comedians to attack the way that they look. They're running out of lies and tricks to confuse the American populace because we did listen to Bernie Sanders and educated ourselves. And now we're not giving up on ourselves either. Now, Dr. Wolf goes on to say that we're not looking for a compromise from the corporate sector, which is what Obamacare became. Sure, there were about 20 million people that did receive health care because of this program, but hundreds and millions of people still don't have health care because of it. Not only that, but they were penalized for not having health care they couldn't afford. I mean, hope and change was very quickly changed to punish and familiar. So ideas like Medicare for All can be a system where we're all taken care of without compromising the people for profitability. And more or less, it's a matter of how. And therein lies the bulk of the argument. How are we going to achieve these large ideas that socialism talks about? A lot of people are putting their faith in a Sanders presidency. And not to be a pessimist or a naysayer here, but we can't put it all on this one man's shoulders. I mean, sure, we can. And maybe the weight and pressure of the working class across his dreams will, will crush him into the most perfect diamond that we can use and, and we can pay for Medicare for all and public education and defunding the military. But I'm not waiting for that option. The reality is that with the DNC and its court of propaganda at MSNBC and CNN mixed with a large populace of people that remains unread on the issues, Sanders might fail. But the hope lies in us. We the people can have and have been inspired by Bernie Sanders enough that we can get organized and mobilized to fight for these ideas. So when people like Krugman point out that President Sanders can't get his ideas pushed through because... Congress won't allow it because of all the opposition that he'll face. We can reinforce that what we need are more grassroots activism and organizing for these ideas. I mean, the Black Panthers did it, which is now being carried on by several other movements, including the Black Lives Matter movement. And the Democratic Socialists of America are doing it. And there's a litany of other organizations that are pushing and organizing for a variety of leadership and, prog and programs that make these ideas into a reality. Now, Krugman goes on to talk about debt in our current system. And he, his point is that debt's not really that big of a deal in our society, and we're way too obsessed with it. Yeah, Mr. Krugman, we are obsessed with it, because every average working class people in America is in some kind of debt. Would you tell a person drowning that they're obsessed with water because they don't want to drown? I mean, would you say that Americans are in debt, are obsessed with the word debt in the same capacity that Paul Krugman is obsessed with the word socialism? Paul Krugman points out that our perspective of debt changes depending on what party is in power. And in his podcast, Democracy at Work, Dr. Richard Wolff addresses how debt is a form of social control, and it most certainly is. If you're in any kind of debt, you need to get a job to pay that debt off. Any job, not the job that you want. The, the freedom of pursuing your passion as a career is not available when you are in constant worry of paying off their debt. We're, I mean, we're a generation living in survival mode, not in freedom, and it doesn't matter what party is in power. Both sides like to use debt to control the populace. And this goes into the final point that was brought up in the debate, that billionaires aren't evil. According to Krugman, having billionaires isn't particularly a bad thing because they're not evil. They're just a class of people that can literally buy anything at any time that they want because they're the shining example of how money matters more than people. That's not evil, that's just good business practices. But that's a class of people that never have and never will be in survival mode. That's There's never a point in their life where they've had to worry about their next meal, paying bills, or hoping that they can get through this week on a $20 bill. 
So their psychology isn't equipped to understand or empathize with what the average working class citizen is going through. Billionaires do have to worry about things like how to spend that extra hundred thousand dollars that they got from purchasing and rewriting the tax code. You know, do, do do I buy that island in the South Pacific or or get a new jet that can break the sound barrier or or do I just bathe in the money and post it on Instagram? Frivolity is not a challenge or a matter of survival. You can't eat a jet or Instagram likes. Then again, these billionaires don't have to worry about what they're going to eat. This creates a major level of distance between the ultra-rich person and we the people. These billionaires look at regular people struggling and say, why, why can't they just work hard and make money at the same level that I did? I mean, I, I, I worked hard at stomping on, on, on the throats of my fellow man and, and rose up through the ranks to exploit someone else's work. And thus... Through ego and rugged individualism, Bert's the pull yourself up by your bootstraps argument that has been failing since its inception. Now, Dr. Richard Wolff points out that after World War II was over, the New Deal was disbanded, and with that, the societal safety nets that were built in to protect the working class from frivolous greed met the same fate. The question isn't are billionaires evil? It's whether we need to have billionaires in our society at all. In a society driven out of compassion and logic, the conclusion would be no. Look, if you have more currencies than people on this planet, there is a problem. And it only exponentially gets worse if you have more currencies than bugs on the planet. These are ideas that the term socialism addresses. It talks about the different ways we can take care of each other as a society while understanding and appreciating each other's differences as strengths. These ideas look at the whole rather than just one part. This is a movement about all of us coming together, not just to sake for a billion dollars, but for seven billion people. It would push us into a comp- to completely change the way that we interact with the world around us. Now, Dr. Richard Wolff says he's proud to be part of the socialist movement, and so am I. The most famous socialists of all, uh, the most famous socialist political figures of all time, Eugene Debs, once said, voting for socialism is just as much socialism as a menu is a meal. Look, Bernie Sanders isn't the be-all, end-all of the socialist movement. The Sanders campaign slogan is, not me, us, and we should take that to heart. Paul Krugman can't back a candidate because of a label associated with him rather than what his ideas actually represent. And his fickleness means that if the labels get associated with the ideas he supports, perhaps he'll give up on that too. The label of socialism is just like the idea of Sanders. It's not the be-all, end-all. The ideas and how we get them into fruition is the most important part of it. So let's keep the movement going, whatever you want to call it. I stand with the people and the ideas that are going to help better all of our lives. Not a label or just one person. Uh, I've got some live stand-up comedy dates coming up. I'm currently on tour working on my new hour, Politely Angry, getting ready to record it live in a few of my favorite cities. Uh, But uh, my entire tour schedule is available on my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. But I'm coming to Houston, Texas, New Orleans, Louisiana, Biloxi, Mississippi, Memphis, Tennessee, St. Louis, Missouri. I'm going to be in Des Moines, Iowa. We just added a show in Des Moines, Iowa. Moline, Illinois in the Quad Cities area. Chicago, Illinois. Indianapolis, Indiana. And then I'm going to be recording my album March 20th at in Washington, D.C. March 21st in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. And at the Pittsburgh Fringe Festival from April 2nd through the 4th. Uh, All the details, all the ticket links are available on my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. 
Uh, if you want to help financially uh, contribute to the, the the content that I put out, all the podcasts that I do, the, the DIY independent touring that I do, I don't have any sponsors, uh, large or small, uh, so uh, I am very much powered by the people, by powered by my listeners, by the people that, that enjoy my content. Uh, uh, you can become sustaining members in, in a variety of different ways. You can become a sustaining member directly on my website. Uh, every post that I put up has a little orange button that shows you how you can become a sustaining member directly through my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. But you can also become a patron over at patreon.com slash Mohan. Ha ha. And uh, also via my Bandcamp at ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. Each of these kind of give you special exclusive stuff. Uh, Not a lot of stuff is behind a paywall, but there are a few things behind the paywall. As as a little token of appreciation for becoming a sustaining member uh, using these, these different platforms, a huge thank you to people that have already become sustaining members in, in, in whatever capacity that, that you have. Uh, it's very, very helpful. Uh, every little bit helps. The Patreon starts at $2 a month. Everything else starts at $5 a month. Uh, whatever you feel like is your, uh, your preferred method of becoming a sustaining member, I very much appreciate it. Uh, but a great way that you can help this show if you can't financially contribute, and that's totally okay because all my content is going to be available for everyone for free. Uh, donating is just an extra step of appreciation. Um, if you can't donate, if you please share the episode. Share it with some friends. Share it with some enemies. Share it within some groups. Some, introduce it to some people that you don't know. Uh, we, uh, because of the topics that I discuss on, on my podcasts, on, on my videos, in my stand-up, uh, my videos don't really get shown to as many people as they could. Uh, so uh, sharing by, by people is, is a great way to help. And finally, I do want to say that I am currently looking for uh, sponsors that are um, that want to be a part of something that engages people in a conversation. So somebody that's that's more socially conscious, that is more uh, a business that is more socially minded, more activist driven, more grassroots driven. Uh, I am going to be actively looking for sponsors. So if you know of somebody that has a company that leans in that direction, or if you are a proprietor of a company that that leans in that direction, uh, feel free to get in touch with me uh, via uh, email or uh, you know uh, Facebook Messenger or or however uh, you you can get in touch with me and uh, and we can discuss what what we can do for each other uh, and 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 discuss like sponsorship details and stuff like that. So I am actively looking for that as well. Uh, but once again, you can find all the details on my website, Ramen Noodles Comedy. Dot com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodles comedy dot com. Thank you guys so much for, for tuning into this podcast and, and all my videos. Uh, thank you for supporting the show. Uh, 